This is my first exhibition in Canvas. I'm a um, It's not my first visit to Tavi, but I'm not far off it. Um, I'm, I'm thrilled. This, this painting here is um, sort of my home, what's become my hometown since I returned to South Wales. Um, Ponticama. It's, uh, it's called Above It All. And they, I did have a trampoline in my garden for a while, and um, youths came up my hill. I, you know, I converted the church on the top of the hill and, um, into a studio, and, uh, and uh, the, the, uh, the youths wanted to know if they could um, I, I, I rent this trampoline or. They wanted to use the trampoline anyway, so I just said, yes, go ahead. And, the, the, and that is where my painting for parkour came from as well. Because these, these um, kids were, they used to somersault off the walls and stuff in, in Point of Camera. And um, they were very good trampolines. So, they, they, so I had this idea of people being suspended in the air. And then this, there's no trampoline in this. But that's where it originated from. And there is a good um, outcome as far as the title is concerned, because above it all, it's, quite, yeah, it's got co quite a few meanings. Um, it's not the only one I did, and I did another one, a very large one, uh, where uh, the figures were more detailed. This is the one I like. Um, so, so you have the look of uh, Rugby ground, you have a, a bowling green, that's what that is. Uh, and, um, uh, the, the, the streets are almost accurate, topographical. Uh, there is such a language of um, a st stereotypical Bali architecture, terraced houses, etc., etc. And I don't need to always refer to what I I can see, I use, I use that stereotypical vocabulary to, to um, make the composition, make up the composition. Um, yes, this is a combination of two elements. Uh, the washing line is very, is it's a theme I constantly go back to. Uh, some, it's so peculiar to, to Britain and even more peculiar to South Wales. It's called pegging out where in Ponticama. Without, um, you peg out. It doesn't mean you say you die. It means you peg, peg the washing out. Um, uh, you'd be surprised at the amount of nations. Italy as well, I think. Everyone in Germany has got a dryer, a dryer in their basement. You never see wa washing hanging out to dry in Germany. And uh, they like the paintings, mine, but they never really question what's that girl doing. <laughs> um, so. Yeah. So the, the, this this is the sign. Of, oh, should we talk about Fragonard? Fragonard swing. A little bit of it here. I made it up because it's unfinished. Fragonard finished. It's in the Wallace collection in the actual Fragonard in the Wallace collection in, um, off Oxford Street in in London. Um, if you ever if you ever duck for a place to go in London. Uh, look up the Wallace collection. Uh, fun, fantastic collection of fantastic French um, 18th century, 17th century um, French painting. Uh, Watteau, Boucher, Fragonard. Anyway, this is a, a, a little bit of a meadow in the, when I first got back to Wales near um, Clangonoy. Slightly wrongly, to be precise. And uh, I, 
I removed the, the model from the canvas, the fragonized canvas, and put her in. Now she's, she is the model because her bonnet was the same. And that's me. But it's called Fragonard's swing at him. At, at one stage, it, it was AKA uh, the artist and his model. But I didn't think many people know, would know. Well, of course they would know Fragonard. They might not know specifically the painting. <laughs> it's, one of, uh, it's a lot of people's favorite painting. If they find themselves going into the Wallace collection. Um, should we look? Should we look? Yeah. This, is, this is an odd one. This is called life drawing. It's not a life drawing. It's a, it's a big heavy oil painting. But I, the composition was there. I, I, I don't know what could they be doing that would be um, respectable. So I put a pencil in his hand. I call it life drawing. Oh, it's uh, giving away some. It's giving away too much. Huh? But no, I, I like the composition very much, and the um, the freedom in which the detail of the head and foreshortening of the body, things like that. I can do things like that without having to observe them. And because of that, my compositions are are always border on the abstract, dynamic. You know, sounding too pompous. Um, and that's because they're not, they're not observed. They are some of them are observed, right? Um, but they they come out of this sort of uh, vigorous, vigorous activity in the in the paint. I have a gallery in Ponte Cama, and I'm going to call it my museum in future because it contains work from that is so different that it needs explanation. It contains work from the, from the 70s, which was quite, it wasn't really abstract, but it was much more modernist in that. Uh, and and it's, the seeds of these paintings were there, but it's so different to look at. Because I changed my medium. I changed my medium to oil paint, and I realized once I had that uh, <laughs> oil paint is like an alchemy, really. It can, you can do anything with it. And you don't have to, um, you, you know, you can just, it's constantly change. The story of how you develop from one style to another, can that whole um, evolution or development can take place in the time scale of one painting. The, the, the modernist phase, it, I, I was supposed to use an egg tempera and it, in a very sort of watercolorish way. On, on an on an un, 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 not a gesso ground, you, you should use um, a tempera on a very um, hard chalk ground, preferably on palette. But I used to use it on a very lightly sized cotton dab, which is kind of white cotton dab, and. Um, I found it worked. You, you could flood on this egg tempera, which was sort of egg, which is sort of egg oil and and, um, and, and pigment, uh, and the egg emulsifies the use of water with the oil. So um, yeah, so so it meant it, it, I, it was like a kind of watercolor. Uh, now I I. I when, when I did start to use it on a proper egg tempera ground, which was a hard um, chalk ground, a gesso ground, I, I started then, I started then to think of it as the underpainting for oil paint. Um, and that's when I started, that's when I changed my medium so drastically. It was about 80. 80 I went fully into the oil painting at about 83. But I, I, I'd always toyed with the idea of doing egg tempera correctly, like that. But it's, it's, it's such a sort of mid medieval or um, oh, Renaissance sort of medium. I, I didn't want to be that fussy. I just liked the way of um, 
like the way of washing it on and for quite a while you can wash it off with water and so that that way of, of working out the composition started in my in my modernist period the funny sort of a way uh, and that's why i say that the all of these paintings were there in the 70s but they take taken me of explanation <laughs> as i've been trying to do today so not only took his pathway, he started with a pencil and wash and paper, but they were still uh, not observed. They were sort of, uh, uh, they went with the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the demand that the gesture will make on you. I, I think a, a, lot of the, uh, a lot of the old masters like uh, Rubens and Tiepolo worked in much the way, same way. I don't think they used models strictly. They just had, they had a fantastic knowledge of anatomy. I would use models then, even with the Turkish bath paintings, but only after I, I, I'd worked, I, I, sometimes of course you've worked out what you want the composition to do and the dynamics of the figure, and you find that it's impossible. It was quite, you know, in the figures it wouldn't do that, but that's okay. And that used to make me feel, yeah. but it worked in the painting. So.